Pat, you were on uh, with John Fort, Morgan Brennan, CNBC, Overtime Plus. You were talking about a new tie-up. You know, and, and, and maybe to people right away, it seemed to make sense. And if you backed out, it didn't. But NVIDIA, Accenture, is this, uh, you know, is some huge amount that uh, Accenture plans to spend standing up a practice? What did, uh, what did you have to say? Yeah, so let me get let me uh, spit out the facts real quick. So um, Accenture standing up a new uh, business group called the NVIDIA uh, Business Group. Uh, they're going to train 30,000 employees on NVIDIA AI technologies. It's, uh, I, I didn't I wasn't able to to parse actually what those 30,000 employees do. Are they consultants? Are they operators? Uh, my guess is knowing Accenture, it's a combination uh, of uh, of both. Um, and you know the training it covers AI Foundry, uh, which is um, a an offering that Accenture has uh, AI Enterprise and Nvidia Omniverse. So this goes all the way from back office to front office to the industrial uh, edge, um, and you know this whole AI refinery from Accenture. It's all about uh, agentic AI journeys, which is the which is the hot topic, particularly uh, around uh, enterprises. So um, let, let's dial back a little. <clears throat> you have trillion dollar investments that are going on in the picks uh, and shovels, uh, the NVIDIAs, uh, the Broadcoms, uh, AMDs, the, the Marvells and the hyperscalers who are offering uh, IaaS services like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Oracle, and then tier twos with Supermicro and Dell. But we really haven't seen uh, the big push, right? I mean, we've got, you know, a, a, a 10Xer on the picks and shovels and the picks and shovel services, or um, actually most of the picks and shovels. But we haven't seen is that downstream enterprise a lift as measured by the software companies, right? The SAPs, uh, the, the Adobe's. Um, Salesforce, um, uh, everybody, everybody like that. So, this is to accelerate that uh, in the uh, uh, it, uh, in the enterprise uh, and get that going. And you know, my my research suggests that we're eighteen to twenty four months from mass enterprise adoption. Some say it's longer. And if this alliance can shrink uh, that gap, it can have some really really huge difference. Uh, this isn't the first type of alliance that NVIDIA has done. In fact, six months ago, uh, they did a deal with uh, IBM as a practice called IBM Consulting Advantage. Uh, and it does similar things and works in conjunction with Adobe, AWS, Palo Alto Networks, Microsoft, Salesforce, and, uh, and SAP. But, you know, overall, um, you know, it, it was, it, you know, this is leaning into that potential risk that, that you and I talk about uh, often here of, of trillion dollar investments uh, making a difference with uh, the enterprises and also with uh, consumers. Yeah, I, I, Pat, I think one of the big sort of gaping holes that NVIDIA had risk was in the enterprise. Yeah. You know that with the largest hyperscalers in the world, NVIDIA is powering almost all the training, um, barring some of the Google stuff they're doing on TPU. Uh, we know that there is a lot of consumption of NVIDIA happening in these uh, from these hyperscale cloud providers. We also know tier twos are building a lot of capacity. There's these specialty data centers for doing uh, applications. We know ISVs are building handsomely on NVIDIA's platform. But enterprises at some point, you know, there's gonna be this opportunity to build out their own AI platforms, um, and there's going to require a lot of expertise. Now, when we uh, did our sort of study early in 24, you know, we found that there was a huge volume of multi-million dollar POCs for AI, but there was a couple things that also we were finding out. One is most of them weren't successful. You were talking about like less than a third. Uh, we were finding out that, um, you know, there was a huge lack of competency. So if you're a mid-sized enterprise, you know, even a small, you know, small cap, mid cap company, and you have limited amounts of resources to put towards AI, you're going to be calling in an SI. And Accenture, by the way, was the biggest 
uh, of the of the SIs out there in terms of volume. You mentioned IBM. They were another big one on consulting side. But companies were going to turn to organizations like Accenture. So while you might use a hyperscaler to consume AI, or you might actually work directly with NVIDIA if you're like a massive company, like if you're like Elon Musk and you're building a super cluster, you may have that kind of direct interaction. But even Musk, right, was building with Dell, so like through partnerships or super micro. But the bottom line, Pat, is expertise is a problem here. Like you've got to get these POCs up. You've got to be able to stand up these, uh, these applications and build these applications. And most companies don't have the expertise. On the other side, for Accenture, they also have to think about their own modernization into the future. Um, how are they going to stay relevant in an era of AI? I think in 23, they did 100 million of revenue from Gen AI. They booked about 300. Um, from what uh, Julie Sweet, CEO, said, they've booked 3 billion in revenue this year for Gen AI projects. So they are, you know, they are making substantial headway in the uh, Gen AI space in terms of growth. And why wouldn't you partner in a big way with NVIDIA? Now, this will tie together when we get to some of the broader generative AI notes. You know, NVIDIA is building these frontier, these massive models now open source to compete. Um, the way I see it, too, is, is you know, this was sort of, that was sort of a missing piece in the sandbox. But you could take the um, what they're doing with NIMS, what they're doing with industry specific, what they're doing with um, you know, their, their CUDA and their developer ecosystem. And suddenly the NVIDIA story becomes really one-stop shop. Like, do you need anyone outside? Um, yeah. And that's, so what I'm saying is, like, so a lot of these OEMs have become big resellers of Dell, but if you're Accenture, you can literally do the entire stack top to bottom for healthcare, for financial services. And if I'm Jensen, it's like, well, who's selling big SI or big integration work to these customers that they want to get more and more, uh, you know, in, in deep with Accenture. So now the question is, at least I'll ask Pat, is do all the other big SIs follow and make large commitments? So we've kind of seen like a cascade. First wave was, you know, the hyperscalers. Second wave were the big OEMs. Third wave has been all the ISVs partnering with NVIDIA is the fourth wave the SIs now will all make big partnership announcements, tying their tying their sled to NVIDIA to make sure that they can monetize the NVIDIA demand that's coming in this next era. And remember, Jensen said this week, the demand for Blackwell is unbelievable. The more you buy, the more you'll save. So keep buying, everybody.